but ultimately I think my nerding out has a lot to do with just the ability to integrate logic and automation into air do- indoor air quality. And I feel there's a gap in the industry with that. Commercial industry got that and has been able to refine that over the lockdowns and COVID and whatnot. But, but it, on a residential side, there's not a lot of automation. There's, you get out of control with humidity and the dehumidifier brings it back into control. The ventilation is the one that is the most difficult to actually respond. It's just on a, you do it ever so often as ASHRAE suggests. But it, with that, you, you've got this whole system that you're trying to manage and your air conditioner is the best way to control indoor air quality because it's the thing that moves the air in the house. And so it was almost like a natural like, marriage. Like, why would you not try to clean your air when you've got this thing that's circulating air five to seven times an hour? And and so that's kind of the where the, the, the interest and the deeper dive into what we can do. And that's, that's the more logical part of it in my brain. And then also it's something my dad had been doing since he started. And I don't know really why he started doing it, but he started installing April air media filters in the nineties. And we've been installing those ever since. I was going to say, that's a nice, that's a nice place to start. Start at the end. What those outcomes you're looking for that, that initial communication or that ongoing communication. How do you do that? How do you get them to do that? How do you know if they're doing it? Do you use scripts or, do you have a do you have a process? And actually, I should say, can you talk a little bit about not just your field folks, but about your internal folks, maybe your, hmm. your dispatchers or CSRs? Yeah, and and I think that right there is where it starts. You we you have to take inputs, just like the air advice takes inputs. Our first input into a customer and what's going on is the dispatcher. Mm-hmm. And so I think someone just being able to answer the phone and have no knowledge of air conditioning, you can make do, but you don't deliver a really good product if the first person that introduces your company or the first person that is that that someone with the problem talks to has no idea what's going on. It makes it challenging because then somebody has to do that eventually. And it's usually best to get enough information up front to figure out where to send the text, who to send, and what needs to be done when they get there to hear the things that people are saying and respond adequately. You've got keywords that are that customers use that because they don't know they don't know all the ins and outs of indoor air quality either, yeah. but they know what they're feeling, what their problem is. And so from there we're able to 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 dive into these indoor air quality. When people are calling about allergies, or dust, or humidity, or filtration, or all the key words, then she can ask some questions. And at that point, we can offer some services on the phone and give them an idea of what we do. And so that's the first step of the process is figuring out, is this a good fit or is this a good call to direct indoor air quality requirements or uh, suggestions and then is it a demand service they just need heating they just need air conditioning and then we can the technician can follow up once it gets there to answer your other question is out in the field that becomes more challenging implementing the air advice because it as if it's established that there's an indoor air quality we know we're coming there with an a tester with their advice and we're going to figure out get some documentation and, and go from there but really is a customer even willing to accept information some people are like i am over my head i had a thousand dollar repair because my blower went out or my motor went out i just need this fix and we'll talk later mm-hmm. i'll take talk later that means that we have another opportunity later on mm-hmm. and so that's where being able to deliver a good service with good customer care that is honest and straightforward, they say, I want to come back to them. And so instead of packing all this stuff in at once, we'll save it for later because we know we've got a customer that's willing to come back because we've delivered such an excellent service. 
And, and so either that could be through the service agreements, which gives us the opportunity to directly look for problems every six months. But a lot of times it's, it's planting seeds into the customer's mind of what their unit should do rather than just expecting it to be the way it is. Meaning like just BTUs in a box. It's just heating and cooling my house. That's all it's doing. But it's creating those conversations. And that comes through training your dispatcher, having those conversations. And usually they're water cooler conversations. It's not, everybody sit down. We're going to talk about this one thing today. Those are good. But sometimes it's as situations arise, redirect those conversations or do a boost interaction to try and direct those.